Okay, so today uh, I go back to hospital, back to the ward, back to Bracken. Um, obviously, because, you know, it's me, there'll be some complaining, some moaning, uh, mild whinging, uh, before eventually accepting what's going on uh, and ending up back in Plymouth. But for now, I'm going to jump right back in to me the next morning after I went to the out-of-hours GP service last night. Uh, still feeling pretty good about the fact that uh, I didn't have to go back in yesterday uh, and not realising what will be happening in 12 hours. Okay, so Tuesday 22nd of October, morning started with my wife calling the doctors to try and get me an appointment. Uh, they weren't keen on giving me a doctor's appointment um, and she had to kind of argue with the receptionist uh, and get them to refer to the notes and all this kind of stuff. They wanted to give me an appointment with a matron. I don't know what it's like around the world, but uh, here in the UK and certainly in Cornwall at my local GP practice, um, whenever you try to call and make an appointment, it's a, it's a difficult situation. It's like you engage in a kind of battle with the receptionist where they see every appointment made as a, as a personal defeat. Even when I explained my history to them of everything that just happened, uh, they still tried to get me to see a nurse rather than a doctor. Um, the only thing that happened to cut through that was uh, telling them chemo. You start the conversation with the receptionist as, hi, hello, I've just been discharged having chemo. They tend to take you more seriously. Don't tell them about MS, don't tell them about the details of all that kind of stuff. Say chemo, stem cell transplant. Uh, they don't care about the rest, they're just they're just listening for the buzzwords that mean you should see doctor and uh, not try to fob you off with someone else. And just do the bloods. But um, anyway, I got to see a doctor uh, who was very nice. Uh, in the, she, he had a bit of a disagreement with my wife about whether or not I was immunocompromised. He felt that because my um, neutrophils were up a bit like to a normal level that I wasn't immunocompromised and I've argued that I'm immunocompromised in other ways, basically because the hematologist told me, and I can't have live vaccines, I can't be in crowds, all that kind of jazz. <sighs> Short breath. <sighs> anyway, yeah, so he was quite he was quite helpful though. He was a very nice man um, in the end, and he sent, oh, so I went across the hall to have bloods, and my wife <laughs> had to tell the, the healthcare to, uh, or she asked the healthcare to use a, an alcohol wipe on my arm before stabbing me up. She didn't comment on the gloves though, which was actually very restrained of her, given uh, how she usually feels about these kinds of things. Uh, I felt fine all morning, to be honest. I, was, I quite honestly told the doctor that I felt completely normal. But uh, unfortunately this afternoon, uh, fever has come back I, uh, I felt really tired after my, after my little trip out. Clearly uh, a trip to the doctors for 35 minutes was enough to exhaust me. So I had a nap uh, and I was absolutely freezing. In this uh, whacking great big bed, uh, I was shivering for almost the entire time. And then, so subsequently, wore the hoodie all afternoon and uh, have roasted myself and did my temperature and I got like a temperature like 35, no, no, 35, what am I talking about? I think, so I did it myself and it was 37, Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's your resting heart rate. I've just spoken to him. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. That's the, that's Please the try again in a moment. Back. He's not Dr. Litchfield. No, that would be weird. Can you, can okay. You know can, I, can I talk? No. Yeah. Wow, what's the resting heart rate? Doing temperature and listening to a resting heart rate. Uh, it's funny, if I had been discharged out from hospital now, I think the big concern would be whether or not I had coronavirus rather than anything else. So looking at it, whatever I had, and quite frankly, they still don't really know what I had. Uh, it's, it's a good thing it was then and, and not now. 112. Oh man, I should have breathed nice and slow to bring it down. Yeah, I do that. You think if you can just will it enough, you can stop it. And that was my plan. Uh, having succeeded in lowering my temperature, using my mind yesterday evening, uh, I was hoping to try and do the same thing with my with my pulse there. Sadly, I fail. Do it again. I'll, 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 I'll just see what difference it would make. Because I, I, I can bring it down like that. You, you have to breathe like, for about 30 seconds before. Yeah, I know, but I, you can kickstart it if you breathe and hold your breath there. You'll initially raise your heart rate. Alright, anyway, so uh, what did it, the bloods aren't back yet, I assume. The bloods aren't back. He said, uh, so I believe Mr. Mr. Wazi is, is having a federal episode. Sorry, Steve. Uh, I'm alright, thank you. I'm good. Uh, Wouldn't say no to a uh, hot chocolate, though. I said, yeah. I said, he's on that. What's I said, well, about an hour ago now. And what is a febrile episode? Hyrexial. Sorry, what's High it? temperature. Okay. Hello, monkey! Uh, so I said, yes. Carry on making cakes. Good stuff. 38 sick. He looks hot. Is that press that one hour ago? 
And what's his uh, resting heart rate? My wife does this voice pretty much any time she's talking to doctors. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why it is. I think it's because obviously working in ITU, she has sort of interacted with hundreds of doctors, maybe thousands. And uh, as, a, as a group, they are disproportionately posh. Okay, right, I've got patients for most than 20 minutes. I'll see them, I'll get them in and out. I'm gonna phone the lab, then I'm gonna phone back in and we'll decide what the best thing to do. Basically, I think this is viral. Uh, we need to decide whether if it goes to hospital, is it going to be Trilisk or is it going to be Dereford? No, I'm not going. I don't want to go. I was like, yeah, cool. He's like, you stay by the phone. I'm going to be back in 15 minutes. You you do a resting heart rate and I'll phone you back. I like Lockwood. Is that okay? He is I was smooth. Like, You've applied a smooth tone like, to Lockwood. Yeah, cool. Okay. I like him. See you bet. Lockwood. <laughs> it's just a cool name, isn't it? I, I'm going to go finish the lasagna. Okay, cool. Could you shut my door so I can carry on? Uh... Bye. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I have no idea. Um, I had a temperature. I did my own temperature. It was 30, it was high 37s. Uh, and I went to my wife's, uh, went back to my house, not my wife's house, my house, um, to see Charlie after he did gymnastics, which was ace by the way. And uh, because her house, I think, because it's like a sauna, uh, one ear was uh, 38.5, one ear was 38. Shivering, yes, but moist. I definitely had a temperature. And uh, my wife doesn't like the word moist, so I try to use moist whenever I can. Moisty, 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 moist. But it doesn't seem to drop. Uh, and she did it again a minute ago, and she's still warm. So it does look like I'll be going back into hospital. Yay. Which is massively shit, because it's like a that For a start, obviously, nobody wants to go back into hospital. But it's a pain in the ass for everybody else. I kind of thought I was done with the backwards and forwards uh, and all that jazz. Um, uh, you know, and I, I appreciate it's a, it, you, you shouldn't keep symptoms to yourself, obviously, but if I hadn't told my wife, then no one would have known. Yes, yes they would. You turn into a big ball of sweaty moist in about five hours, so uh, even if they didn't say anything or if you didn't tell them, they would have just had to follow the pools of water trickling down the stairs. And I wouldn't have to go to hospital. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be my evening. So, I'm going back to Bracken. Okay. My wife is on the phone to one of the nurses now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At least I have a bed there, rather than going to any, but... Well annoying. You'll have to imagine some driving B-roll for this bit. Vroom, vroom. One across. Liquid for the mattress. Waterbed. Mm. Waterbed? Yes. I always fancied a waterbed when I was younger. So did I. Yeah, but now I realise I would just feel sick enough. One down, a garden invertebrate beginning with a W. The wasp invertebrate. I invite you to help with the crossword. If there are any that I don't solve here that you hear the clues for, feel free to give me the answers down below. Insect beginning with W. Half a woodhouse. Dressmaking fold. A chronic joint ache beginning with R. Rheumatoid. No, yeah, very good. Bosh! Get to the by threat. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. Give me your money. Mm. Generally, there's none left. All the back At this stage, I'm still losing hair from chin and head, and uh, my wife still enjoys plucking me like a chicken. Ow! That one wasn't good. That one hurt. Ah. Oh, you got those from the side. Oh, this is the side to go for them to talk them now. So, I finally convinced uh, Jeannie to leave, which was really good. Uh, I was feeling quite guilty at how long she was there. And she left me behind in the room with a nice Xbox and, you know, stuff to do. Except, the Xbox had no games and there was no remote for the TV. It was like a sort of taunt. It was like they were teasing you for being there. Back again. Alright, so I dribbled down my chin and uh, put one of the bells on the floor. Smooth. That was not good. <sighs> that was it. So I'm getting quite shivery. So, um, it sort of comes and goes. Like my face and head is really hot, but the rest of my body is uh, crazy cold, so I just sort of sit here and shiver. But I'm not putting on my jumper, uh, because that will increase my temperature. I didn't film any of the rigors while I was at home. Uh, I was clearly preoccupied with reducing my bodily H2O content, but I was having them like every 20 minutes. There was a lot. So I was a very sweaty, very, very sweaty, moist man. Finally, after quite a few, I realized there was a link between uh, wearing lots more clothes and the sweatiness being worse. Even if you feel cold, don't layer up. So uh, yeah, 
I just sit here and shake like some sort of dog on firework night. It's a good look. That's the ward, six beds, all male. Uh, wife finally went home after 90 minutes and then I waited another sort of 60 or seven before they got the bed ready. And then I'm off. Middle of the night being wheeled off to have an x-ray. It's obviously not the most ideal way to be woken up, but it was kind of fun to be to be sat in the chair. It felt like something from The Shining, sort of swaying side to side and moving slowly. Uh, sort of like the hospital was the, was the hotel from The Shining. I really liked it. Yeah. I'm married and stuff, so we can go on there. <laughs> What's the purpose of the video then? Eight months later, it's a vlog. Tell me when. Keep going. That's good. Cool. Nice one. Thanks, man. Oh, cool. That was just for that fan, but I could do it for long and long time. With that one, it's very sexy. Thank you very much, sir. Very kind of you. I, I, can, I can go from here. Yeah, you're good, Jenny. Sure. Yeah. And finished. So, uh, back at hospital. Uh, it was it was pretty rubbish, you know. I, I kind of resigned myself to it, but at the same time, I didn't really, I, I didn't feel like it was fair. You know what I mean? You kind of, I did my time, I went in for my, my few weeks, uh, and then that, that's it, that's my stuff done. But no, no, clearly not. The, the most difficult thing was, was my son. Uh, when he knew I was going back in, that created a real anxiety for him uh, every time I went to the doctors for, for months afterwards. Uh, he thought I'd end up having to go in to stay like I was now. He was so, so upset. But there we are, unknown infection, takes me back into hospital. I'll be yeah. there for another week or so now. And the, the cycle of being woken up and not sleeping and all that kind of stuff, it comes back. It was like I was never away, really. And they start me on some treatment. Uh, things start to look up. They douse me with antibiotics, um, full bleach, as, uh, as Dr. Hunter said. And then that's pretty much it. And they start giving me rituximab a week or so later. But for now, that is it. We are done. Uh, I forget what the next one is. Let me see. This has come out on the Hickman line. Uh, some other stuff. It's, it's kind of weird because that one is actually, I think, predominantly with me on the bay. And that was kind of an unusual experience. I hadn't been there for that long before when I was in last time. So for now, I will say thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Uh, all likes and subscribes, very, very much appreciated. And uh, any comments, questions, uh, throw them down below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. But for now, I will take you to the man who uh, is talking. But he so even though I knew that I probably should. So you engage in this, this sort of round. Nah. For those of you who saw the last one, uh, I. Uh, from head and f head, head, face. And turning me into like a sort of chicken, chicken. Because I, I thought if I, my body was a. I realized it in that kind of created a real anxiety, anxiety. At this stage, at this stage, stage.